Hi, everybody. This is Andy Gluck. With me today is uh, David Mastro Berardino from Creasis Software, as well as Vincent Gaio. And um, they are actually, Creasis is from Canada. And it is a portfolio management software program that uh, is coming to America. And they are established in Canada, pretty well established. It seems like they have something like $350 billion in assets on their portfolio management software system, uh, spread across about 7,000 advisors, and um, at 60 uh, different companies. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to you, David, uh, thank you for giving us this quick tour of Creases software. Um, so Creases is an application that is downloaded by the web, and we offer it as a SaaS solution. Um, what's interesting about the application is that we are an integrated portfolio management, CRM, rebalancing uh, software. So um, as you can see here on screen, uh, the way I like to set up the application, there's three main areas. So in the middle section here, uh, the browsers where uh, users and advisors can see uh, different aspects of their book of business. We have the icons at the top that control the information that is viewed in the browser. And then we have the modules on the left-hand side, which enables advisors to drill down into the different aspects of their book of business. Now, as I mentioned off the top, uh, Creasis does have an integrated CRM portfolio management uh, software. So uh, that means we have financial, non-financial data, we integrate with back offices as well, obviously, uh, in order to retrieve that data. Um, and with the dashboard that you see here, what our goal was is to establish a way for users to take all this different data and uh, have it pushed to them in a contextual format. So we have different boards, as you can see here, uh, where users can view uh, results of different queries and then use these boards as a way of following up or keeping track of these different uh, items, tasks, portfolios, uh, whatnot. So, uh, for example, we can quickly see where are my portfolios with negative cash, uh, where are my clients with over a certain amount of uh, assets that I want to keep track of, uh, which have an investment objective variance uh, that I need to look into, uh, what are the birthdays of my clients in the period selected, or any maturing bonds or expiring options uh, that will generate some cash. So all the boards here are completely customizable by the users. They can add boards, they can remove them, they can create their own boards, and there's really no limits as to uh, what they can uh, create. So from here, if a user comes in first thing in the morning, they see that they have a, a client that they want to look into a specific portfolio, they can assign the task to themselves, and then if they wanted to drill down to see this particular portfolio, they can simply click and drag to my portfolio module that I have on the left-hand side. Now, the, port, the click and drag is actually something that's really popular within our application. Uh, it just enables users to very intuitively and very quickly move around and drill down very easily into their book of business. So in my portfolio here, I have uh, different positions that are held. I also have my summary here, as well as my asset allocation objectives that I can quickly see now based on my uh, numbers that you see here. So I have my actual versus target. I can quickly see by asset class where I'm off, where I need to make adjustments. And obviously, all this information here is completely customizable. If I wanted to drill down into a specific position, I can just start typing. Creases recognizes that you're doing a quick search, and I can jump to my specific position. I can also drill down by double-clicking to view uh, general information on the position, to view um, income. I can view gains and losses, um, specific details on transactions that have modified quantities and unit cost over time, my lots etc. And again, keeping with the idea of drilling down, if I wanted to see the transactions for this position, again, I can just drag over to my transactions, quickly see uh, the information on this particular position. Now again, what's interesting with the click and drag, uh, I can drag over a client uh, and see all the transactions for an entire uh, client, uh, which means all their underlying accounts. Uh, some of the interesting views of the portfolio level that are uh, in, that are popular, uh, we support any con or any currency uh, that is supported by our clients. Uh, we can jump to any date in the past as well. 
So normally when uh, we, are, we do migrate clients over, when new clients do come on board, uh, we migrate over their historical data and they can quickly jump to any date in the past for their, uh, their portfolios. Uh, so if they get a call from a client and they wanted to speak about a certain um, you know, position or portfolio as at any date in the past, it's simply a click away. The cash flow projection is also another popular feature to show uh, the revenue that will be projected over the next 12 months for each position as well as for the entire portfolio. And this is also available in a report format if they wanted to share this with clients. There's also an easy way to manipulate the look of my positions here. If I wanted to view a breakdown by an asset class that'll match whatever I have selected here, and then I can drill down into a specific category, for example, if I just wanted to see my equity positions here, and I can quickly do so. So again, uh, the idea behind Creases is that everything is uh, a couple of clicks away, very easy to navigate, very easy to manipulate data and to access the data. And then the same uh, token, if I wanted to, uh, let's say I was speaking to this particular client, Mr. Uh, Beanland here, and I wanted to add a note into this particular client's file, uh, I can simply click on my client name here, and it'll bring me to my notes section where I can add a note uh, which is saved and date stamped for compliance purposes. Uh, as we talk about the uh, CRM side of the application, if you will, uh, we do have a client's module here. A client is basically an individual. So in my client's module, I have all my individuals listed here. And in the summary section at the bottom here, I can quickly see the accounts underlying this particular individual, as well as any relationships that they belong to. So a client can have multiple accounts, obviously. They can have an IRA, they can have cash accounts, margin accounts, et cetera. Uh, they can also belong to multiple relationships. It can be a family, it can be a composite, it could be really any grouping of accounts uh, that uh, the user requires. And then I can obviously quickly see uh, any information uh, on the left, right-hand side here uh, concerning this particular client. So if I double click or click the info button, it'll bring me to the same screen that I had seen earlier to see my notes, uh, to see general information on my client. I can also view any contacts that I've had with this client in the past. So it could be any uh, sort of agenda items. Anytime I schedule an appointment, a schedule a call or a task, uh, I can save that here. And our agenda also synchronizes with Microsoft Outlook. So any information that you add increases will update uh, Microsoft and vice versa. We also have a profile tab. Uh, this enables users to uh, get information and save information uh, as it pertains to a know your client type of data. And they can create their own fields, they can create check boxes, drop down lists, uh, freeform text fields, and all this information is available in the uh, search uh, functionality. The document storage is a really popular functionality as well. Uh, it enables uh, users to archive any documents, whether they're reports generated by the application or any external documents like an IPS document or statement, uh, and they can save it directly in the client file. Uh, so again, from a compliance point of view, it's been really popular because users, and if they're audited, uh, they can quickly view on one screen all the notes, all the contact information, all the KYC, all the documents in one place. Obviously, another uh, important feature within the application is the uh, performance calculations. So as it pertains to performance, we do follow the GIF standards in order to calculate performance. Um, users can modify their time periods on the fly. Again, we support any currency as well, uh, so they can view performance in any uh, currency that's required. Um, net of fee and gross of fee returns as well as risk measures uh, are applied. And we do calculate performance daily. And every uh, day's performance is saved, so we never uh, purge any information as well. I can select periods on the fly to get a calculation, as you just saw here as well. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, a client can have multiple accounts. So if I wanted to see specific accounts on this client, I can just click and drag over to my accounts and view the account information uh, for John here. Same idea at the relationship level. As I mentioned, the relationship is any grouping of accounts. So I can create, uh, for example, here, the Beanland family, and I can see the hierarchy of this family here. So it could be the husband, the wife, the child, the children's accounts, the corporate accounts can all be viewed into one, uh, into one portfolio. So again, if I hit performance at the relationship level, 
I'll be automatically aggregating all the underlying accounts as we just saw here. And again, if I select this particular relationship, drag it over to my portfolio, what Greasis will do is give you the portfolio view for the entire family. And obviously the summary information, the objectives that are set at the family level will apply. So depending on how the users want to manage their book of business, more and more we see them at uh, managing the family level. Um, Creases obviously has the flexibility uh, to show that information and also to report on that information as well. Uh, so the reporting feature is obviously very popular. Uh, in order to access my reports, I just simply hit my icon here. I can bring up different report packages that I've saved in the past or I can access any of the standard reports uh, that we have available from our roster of reports here. So if I look at my saved reports here and select this over, I have a predetermined package that I can select. So a lot of our users will have multiple packages that they may customize for specific user types or client types, I should say. Uh, so maybe it's more uh, sophisticated clients might get reports that are a little more detailed, whereas uh, clients that are less sophisticated may get some more simple uh, and uh, easier to read reports, uh, for example. Uh, as far as some of the um, outputs uh, that for the reports, uh, they can preview them directly on screen. They can send them via email as well or simply print them out. Um, and they can obviously archive the reports as I showed uh, earlier. Uh, by archiving the reports, it will be saved in the document archive uh, that we had seen earlier. So a quick example of a, a report package might be um, something like this where I have a cover letter uh, where this is something that we've actually customized to show uh, the specific client address in a, uh, to line up with the window envelope. So for this particular client, they want to just insert this into their window a letter and uh, send it off directly. Uh, an important thing to mention on the reports, everything is customizable. So the logos, obviously the colors, the graphics that you see here uh, can be modified, changed, added, removed uh, in order to really match the branding uh, of our firms. Uh, so this is a, one example of a document summary. Uh, they can see the table of contents, a quick summary of the underlying accounts. Uh, what's interesting also in this example, I've added an external document within the report package here. Uh, so in this particular case, something that I've pulled off the web, normally our clients will add a uh, market commentary that they put out on a you know, quarterly or monthly basis uh, that they want to uh, send off to their clients. Uh, again, an example of our portfolio valuation report. Uh, so I've, obviously, as I mentioned, everything is customizable, so they can add and remove columns as required. Uh, the mapping of securities is also customizable as well and can be modified to match the client's needs. An example of our asset allocation, again, customizable color schemes uh, can be applied as well here. And this is one example of our performance report, our simple performance report that shows uh, during the time period selected, basic information, starting ending values, inflows, outflows, and revenues, as well as performance and comparisons to indices, uh, as we see here. So again, this is just one example of a, of a report package. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, clients can build a report package um, and select multiple clients at once, or multiple relationships, or multiple accounts, uh, and then start off the report generation and while the reports are being generated on our servers, they can continue to work in the application uh, without being uh, bogged down by that process. Another one of the important features, uh, getting back to the relationships, is uh, the billing functionality. Uh, again, very, uh, very common, very important for our clients. So using the billing features here at the relationship level, uh, they can determine different tiers, uh, obviously, in terms of asset center management and different um, basis points that they would charge or percentages that they were charged based on these different tiers. Uh, then they can select which accounts will actually be considered in the asset center management, which accounts will be actually billed, and they can also select which accounts will be debited, uh, the amounts that are calculated by the application. One of the features that are really popular, uh, obviously, here, they can select not only the frequency of when the uh, billing will be done, but also the end periods. So a lot, a lot of times our uh, clients want to uh, you know, spread out their revenues over the course of the year. So they might have everybody 
as a quarterly, billed quarterly, but they have different end periods in order to spread out their revenues. Uh, the last thing I'd like to show here in this quick introduction uh, is our rebalancing. So rebalancing models can be set up uh, and the different accounts, clients, as well as relationships can be assigned to a particular model. So in this particular case here, I have a balanced model. I have different assigned portfolios. I have a portfolio. My target portfolio can be created as well with my target weights uh, for all the positions within my model. I can set restriction rules uh, at the model level as well as at the individual portfolio level. So if, you know, users have clients that do not want to invest in SIN stocks, for example. They can set up those different restriction rules here. They can also set up different synchronization criteria in order to have tax efficient uh, rebalancing as well. Uh, so if they want to uh, purchase uh, you know, their stocks and their cash accounts, for example, uh, they can set up those different rules here as well. And then as far as rebalancing, they simply click on one icon here. Uh, it will give me a message that I have certain restrictions and I want to continue. I say yes. Different parameters that can be set up as far as rounding factors, minimum order amounts, uh, dynamic or static rebalancing. Uh, they can synchronize all the underlying accounts or all the uh, underlying positions or selected positions. So if they just want to replace, you know, uh, let's say uh, Oracle with Apple, and maybe you just want to synchronize those, they can do so as well. So in the next uh, step here in the rebalancing process, uh, the application will go through the actual uh, generation of the trades and then uh, they'll pop up on screen and obviously here is where the users can make modifications to the different uh, orders. So these are all the individual orders uh, across all my portfolios. I can set up my different block trades, so grouping them by type, uh, grouping them by uh, security obviously. Uh, users can make modifications to the different orders as well. Uh, if required, and then they can just generate the output. Uh, normally, it could be a uh, list that can be uploaded to a specific back office. In this example here, I'll select my Excel output, uh, and then the application will open up Excel, as we saw here, and here's where we can see the different uh, orders. So this is my individual order list, and then I have my uh, blocked orders here. And the final thing I'd like to show um, is actually our mobile solution that we're uh, about to put out here. Uh, this is our iPad app uh, that we've just uh, fresh off the uh, uh, out of the gate, basically. Uh, what uh, this was is basically a way for clients, uh, investors, to access their portfolios. So again, this can be branded according to our clients' um, look and feel with their logo here. Uh, so their clients can then view their accounts that they want to uh, view on screen, select the account that they want, and then in this easy to understand and view uh, nine box format, they can drill down into the different areas of their uh, portfolio. So if I wanted to see my detailed portfolio, I can bring up a quick view of my positions, my asset allocation, and a summary, as you see here. Now, if you imagine this on an iPad or an Android tablet, I can just swipe uh, to the next grid or next box, which is my performance in this case, then uh, clients can always see where they are located using this icon at the top left here. So then I can swipe again, a simple idea to swipe to the next, my gains and losses, swipe to the next summary, which is my heat map, uh, to see what are my gains and losses, uh, what are my uh, large uh, holdings, as you can see here. So it's very easy to navigate throughout this as well, as you can see. If I wanted to come back to my nine boxes, I can just click here or tap here. The report section is where users can actually share the reports directly onto a uh, to the client's uh, tablet. So if I wanted to, you know, generate a report and share it here, I can do so and share it in this view here. We've also integrated a messaging platform here so that users can communicate and uh, the clients can communicate with the users as well. And all those uh, items can be saved um, as is a note, again, for compliance purposes. So the last thing, again, the joke that I like to end up with is uh, after 25 years of development, the most popular feature is actually the increase of font size that can be done directly on screen. So besides all the synchronization and reporting that we do, 
this seems to be the most popular feature. 